The topic of this afternoon is what would be, what are the lessons to learn from uh, the Munich Agreement. And I have chosen to concentrate on our area in the Middle East. In fact, uh, uh, appeasement is opposed to uh, standing firm. And when you say uh, appeasement, in fact, uh, you are asking to, you are adopting a policy of, uh, uh, that is diff sometimes interpreted differently by your rival. Either he feels that you are a weak guy, and this is why you just uh, accepted uh, his terms. Or, in fact, he says, okay, this is a first step uh, in, the, in the next steps to come and to just uh, uh, try to, uh, to attack you. The second, uh, the second uh, uh, position, of course, is standing firm. And when, whenever your, uh, your rival moves, you just move the, uh, against. And in fact, it's either you, uh, it, it leads to, uh, uh, to a conflict or to deterrence. In any case, each, each of the choices that you make in this policy is clearer when you look backward and you understand what happened. And it's never clear when you look forward. You don't know. And this is, I mean, th th this is a fact of life. And when, we, when we, you live and we live in a tough neighborhood, like, uh, like the neighborhood we have, appeasement is looked by the Arabs mostly as a weakness. And uh, instead of deterring, it becomes, uh, I would say, it, it becomes an option just to try to provoke Israel more to provoke Israel into, uh, and to see what are the limits of this provocation. In this area, there are several examples to be given. I will begin with Iraq, for instance. Iraq, under Saddam Hussein, was a powerful nation. And Turkey and Iran had plans to divert waters from Iraq. They had, the Turks wanted to build, they had a Shim of building 22 dams in Anatolia, stopping the, uh, the, uh, stopping the, the Euphrates and the Tigris. And the, the Iranian, through the Sarwan and the, uh, uh, and the other, uh, other tributaries of uh, the, uh, the Tigris, wanted also to divert. Saddam Hussein just told the, 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 the Turks, if you build the Atatürk Dam, I will bomb it. And the Turks stopped it. And they stopped filling the dam until 2003, after the uh, American invasion of Iraq, the weakness of the Iraqi government provoked, in fact, and gave Turkey and Iran the opportunity to fill the dams, the reservoirs. In Turkey, it's, it's a dam on the Ilsu Dam. It's 300 square kilometers of reservoir. And in Iran, it's a little bit different. But the fact is that today, Iraq is suffering 50% less of water than it used to have in the past. In Basra itself, you have every day about 400 to 600 people who are hospitalized with the dermatologic problems, with the, with the uh, terrible diseases that are there, and there's no water in Iraq today. Second example in the area is the attitude towards uh, Bashar Assad. Bashar Assad, and uh, let's take Obama, Obama in the White House knowing that uh, this tyrant has been killing his people, has been gassing his people, has been de destroying his country. And, uh, you know, the months after months, you had the scores of people dead. Today, maybe more than 600,000 people have been killed in the civil war in Syria. About 10 million people are either displaced or refugees. In Lebanon, every four, citizens, uh, four citizen of Lebanon is a Syrian. In, uh, in Turkey, you have two and a half million uh, refugees. And yet, nobody is doing anything. Is this acceptable? Is this moral? No. Why, why nobody would, uh, were, would move? Obama said at the last moment, he said, okay, he was uh, just uh, strolling in the White House uh, gardens and finally decided not to do anything. And uh, he just forced Saddam, uh, the, uh, uh, Bashar Assad to disarm from his chemical weapons, which we know it, wa it was not true. In fact, today, Assad is still in power, much more powerful than in the past. He is, uh, he is seconded by the Russians and the Iranians and the militias. And in fact, he is ruling that, uh, Syria. And in less than a month or even more, you will have a campaign, all-out campaign in Idlib. And this campaign would be catastrophic. 
two and a half million people would have to flee and have thousands and thousands of people that would be killed under the, the, the bombing, the carpet bombing of the Russians. Now, if you look at uh, a closer ra the range, we looked at Iraq, we looked at uh, Syria, we looked at uh, Israel, Israel and Hezbollah in Lebanon. 2006, we, uh, we have this incursion into Lebanon, and we discovered that Hezbollah has labyrinths, he has uh, fortifications in South Lebanon, and then we withdraw. Withdraw because of intervention, international inter intervention, and just we just sit down and look at the, the process of how Hezbollah is getting stronger and stronger, and we just wonder how, how did Hezbollah get to the point where he has more than 100,000 rockets targeting uh, Israel? How it, did Hezbollah transform the situation in South Lebanon into a fortified position? And then the next time, that the, the next round with Hezbollah would be a dire one for Israel. How Israel is trying to, to stop uh, the uh, missiles from coming from Iran. And each day uh, we, know, we learn about new methods that the Iranians have adopted, either with, the, uh, with airplanes, uh, civilian airplanes landing in Beirut, since in, in Damascus they're, they're under uh, Israeli observation. And this is this process of not meeting Hezbollah and standing firm against Hezbollah because of, the, the, of, of internal and domestic uh, uh, reasons, I think, had brought uh, a, a difficult position for the Israel facing Hezbollah. The same goes with Hamas. The same goes with Hamas. Hamas, I mean, has been arming himself for the last 11 years. And Israel has accepted the fact because, I mean, it's appeasement. It's a policy of appeasement. We don't want to, to wage a war. We don't want the, our, the, our villages uh, to be bombed. We don't want we had the, uh, the, uh, a political problem inside. So let's, uh, the, let's accept the situation. So we have a round, another round, and another round. It never finishes. And now that today the, the Egyptians have announced that there no more uh, contacts concerning the Hasdara, what is the so-called Hasdara, I mean, the, the so-called uh, 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 the stopping of uh, of uh, war with the uh, I mean the belligerence with the uh, uh, with Hamas. As far as Iran, maybe Iran is the only target that Israel right now has taken as a a, a, a tangible target. We have learned yesterday that Israel has bombed more than has stricken in Syria more than 200 times our air force, and we have targeted all the missiles and weapons that have been sent by Iran into the area. And I believe that this is, th this is the way Israel has to, 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 uh, to, uh, to be, I mean, to behave vis-a-vis -vis Iran. The problem is with, with Iran is that uh, if we remember the Iran, uh, Iran, the Iranian-Iraqi war lasted for more than 10 years. And I don't know if we have uh, the enough oxygen in our lungs in order to continue to fight the, the Syrians, uh, 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 the Iranians in Lebanon. Finally, uh, maybe uh, a last example of uh, uh, of this uh, appeasement versus standing firm is uh, Shamir's government in 19, uh, uh, during the first Gulf War. The fact that Israel did not respond or did not react to uh, Iraqi bombing was interpreted by everybody that as a, uh, as a very, uh, uh, say, uh, as a good choice and certainly has, uh, has given Israel a lot of leverage in its international uh, relations uh, uh, abroad. Basically, I believe that, uh, uh, as I said, we live in a tough neighborhood, and we have to deal with uh, our neighbors the way they think and the way they behave. Uh, Cooper told me yesterday about a seminar that was, uh, the, that was uh, held in uh, Barilan about uh, the Oslo the agreement and about the, se the, the very sequence where Arafat comes the first time into the area, and in his car are hidden two most famous terrorists. And it is up to the uh, local commander, uh, Yom Tov Samia, to, to decide, because he calls the prime minister, and the prime minister says, you are the one on the ground, you make your decisions. And instead of saying and telling Yom Tov Samia, you tell this guy, I won't say another word about it, to turn around and to go back from where he came. And the next time he comes here, let him come clean. This is the way we should have treated Arafat. Unfortunately, it was not done because of political reasons. And in this, uh, in this, in this reality, we, we are in a position where our decisions 
can uh, influence our uh, let's say uh, uh, our fate here. So uh, if you show weakness, if you show weakness, you will never have peace with the Arabs. Never have peace with the Arabs. The first occasion that uh, they, they will feel that you are weak, you will be just taken over. And this is why our, our policy has to decide basically on how we adapt ourselves. And in this tough, again, tough neighborhood, weakness is not, a, is not the formula that we should accept, meaning appeasement. Thank you very much.